Hi everyone, welcome back to Storytime Recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the film from 2020, Unhinged. Without any further, let's get started. On an unusually rainy night, the man is seen sitting in his pickup. It's clear that he's upset. He first removes and discards his wedding band, lights a match, then exits the vehicle holding a hammer and a gas canister, breaking through the doors and letting the residents know that he is there, they rush to him only to be viciously put down. He then pours gas all over the house and sets it on fire, and as he drives away, the house explodes. While Rachel is dozing off on the couch, Andy, her attorney and closest friend, wakes her up and informs her that her soon-to-be ex-husband wants her house and that they should submit a protest. When her son enters, she ends the talk to instruct him to get ready because they are going to be late. The son Kyle is in the dining room with his uncle Fred, who is speaking to his old mother. The news is mentioning the violent attack earlier, stating that the man was the woman's ex-husband with a history of violence and drug abuse. While Rachel looks for her candy cane scissors, Fred and Kyle talk. When Fred's girlfriend joins them at the table, they discuss their financial issues especially the expense of their mother's nursing care stay. She drives off with Kyle, and the two of them get into their very old car. They get into traffic, argue about using the freeway, and the mother decides to take the route despite her son's protests that they will be late. While driving, she receives a call from her husband, and the child answers excited to speak with him. He is disappointed almost immediately when his father calls off their plans to see a game, and the mother attempts to ease him up. Even worse, they find themselves stuck in traffic on the expressway, and his mother receives a second call from a client when she is unable to convince herself that she will not be late this time. After Rachel is fired, the son gives her a small pep talk before advising them to take the next exit off the freeway and drive down the service streets. As they approach the red light at the end of the freeway, they stop on behind a gray pickup truck. When the light turns and the pickup stays still, she honks and passes him by. When he comes up next their car, it's the man who set the home on fire. He tells them to roll down their windows, and Kyle does so. The man and Rachel engage in an awkward back and forth in which he belittles her and then apologizes, thinking that she will follow him. When she disagrees, he becomes agitated and rattled, threatening to reveal to her what a bad day actually means. Kyle is afraid and asks her to go. The man begins to pursue them and twice cuts them off. After taking a different route and arriving to Kyle's school a bit later than expected, Rachel contacts Andy and requests to meet for breakfast in 20 minutes, vowing to be on time despite running out of petrol. When Rachel pulls up to the gas station, sets the pump, and walks inside to get a few more things before paying the cashier, she sees the gray truck parked behind her car. What can I get you, sir? Fearing that the man in the pickup has been following her since their argument, she tells the cashier and a guy in line next to her. The guy promises to walk her out and get his plates, so she fills up the tank and gets in the car. The guy tells her that the man's plates are what she drives frequently, and he stays behind to warn the man and the pickup not to follow. Suddenly, the man drives him into the street, where he is hit by another car. While the pickup keeps pursuing Rachel, she tries to break free, but they get caught in another traffic jam with him directly behind her. He keeps smashing into her car, but no one seems to notice. They resume driving and Rachel can't find her phone to call for help. The man pulls up next to her and reveals that he has her phone. Rachel drives off, causing an accident and nearly running over a woman believing she has finally lost him. She pulls into a parking lot to hide and calm herself. While all of this is going on, Andy is waiting for Rachel at the diner. He calls her, but all he gets is voicemail. Suddenly, a man in a pickup pulls up and approaches Andy. He introduces himself as an old friend of Rachel's, and the two start chatting. They discuss about Rachel's divorce and her terrifying experiences with road rage. The man is even defending her soon-to-be ex-husband, which makes Andy feel uneasy. Andy suggests that he try giving him his own phone. Return in the parking area Rachel hears a buzzing sound while searching for her tablet. She finds a phone and answers it, even though it's not hers. The man hands Andy his cell phone and says he's waiting for her in the diner with one of her old friends. Rachel responds that she doesn't know the person he mentioned. Andy hands the man the phone, 
and as soon as she begins to describe what occurred and that he called him a psych, he tells her that she needs to sincerely apologize to him in person. This convinces Andy that something is wrong, and he begs to have his phone back. At that moment, the man strikes Andy with a cup, breaking his nose. Everyone in the diner becomes agitated, but no one steps in to help. When the man strikes him, knocks him unconscious, and puts Rachel on speaker, he asks her if Andy is just her friend and lawyer, or if she is cheating on her husband with him like his own wife did. He then tells Rachel to say her final words to Andy as he chokes and eventually stabs him, and people in the diner do nothing but record the incident on camera. When the man informs Rachel that Andy has passed away while leaving the diner, she attempts to beg and apologize, but he doesn't believe her and leaves quickly. The man calls her back on her own phone and begins reading out every message she has received, including one from her son's school. He then plays games with her, asking her to select the person from her contact list that he should kill next. When she refuses, he gives all of her money to her husband and threatens to burn down her house and go after her mother. Rachel says she will choose herself, but he refuses and begs for another name. She gives him the name of the client who fired her. He hangs up, and Rachel phones the police right once. The man is absent from the home when they get to her client's residence. As Fred watches what happened in the cafe on the television, he notices that his girlfriend isn't answering his calls and that there is an odd noise coming from the other room. Fred decides to check on her and, while doing so, he spots the pickup park before the house. The noises continue to exist so he pursues them while carrying a knife. After the man shows up holding his beaten girlfriend and telling him about what happened with Rachel, he kills Fred's girlfriend and sends Rachel a picture of him with her brother. When the man calls Rachel again, she tells him she called the police, which he already knows. He then uses Rachel's phone to check the tracker and sees that she is in front of Kyle's school. He then gives her three minutes to pick him up and leave, failing which he will kill Fred. While pouring gasoline on him, he tells Fred to write a letter to her blaming her for his girlfriend's death. Meanwhile, Rachel picks up her son from school and calls the man back, identifying herself as Kyle. The man threatens to set her brother on fire if she doesn't put him on speaker. Fred is then forced to read the letter he wrote, claiming that he will never see another sunrise and that Rachel is to blame for everything that happened. Unexpectedly, a policeman enters the house. The man ducks behind Fred, sets him on fire, and flees, only to be shot in the shoulder by the officer. Rachel is able to hear every conversation over the phone. She breaks down and stops the car as Kyle attempts to console her. When the phone rings again, it's the man informing her that Fred is dead. He threatens Kyle, but she threatens him back, saying she's done with all of his rubbish, and smashes the phone. She gets in the car with Kyle, and they drive to the police station. They discover while traveling there that he may be using Rachel's iPad to monitor them. Kyle discovers it tapped under her seat and wants to toss it out the window. When Rachel thinks of using a tablet to monitor the man, like he did with them previously. When he discovers he's right in front of them after robbing her neighbor's van, Rachel advises Kyle to put his seatbelt on as the police car approaches the side of the van that he's driving straight forward. Kyle tries to get the police's attention, but the man follows them and catches up smashing the police car and causing a serious an accident. Kyle calls the police from the tablet, but they are unable to assist them because the tablet runs out of battery and they are left on their own. I don't. Ideas follows Rachel as she speeds up to drive to her mother's house, where the area is just difficult enough to slow him down a bit. She tricks him, losing him for a brief period of time, and causes automobile collisions along the route only long enough to reach her mother's house and allow Kyle in. Once inside, he turns on the alarm's panic button, grabs a flashlight, and heads upstairs to hide in a hidden compartment. While this is going on, the man is driving around the neighborhood looking for them. He notices the car and pulls over to take his medication and gather himself. Suddenly, Rachel rams into him with another car. He grabs her and pins her to the ground telling her that she will never forget him and what she could have done to save her boy. With Rachel down, he follows Kyle inside the house, calling for him while lying that it's the police. The child makes a noise, and Rachel emerges from hiding, but so does the man. They get into fights, with the man relentlessly pursuing Kyle while Rachel attacks him nonstop in an attempt to stop him. After he knocks her down and begins strangling her son, she discovers her candy cane scissors and stabs him to death. 
When the police do arrive at the house, the officer who discovered the threat approaches Rachel and Kyle and informs her that he is still alive. They then drive toward the hospital to see him, being careful not to enrage anybody else in there. Thanks for watching. And remember to turn on your notifications to watch more movie recaps like this one.